This was part of a Holocaust survivor's identity, their, both their number and their uniform was their identity. And I think that many uh, survivors felt that nobody would believe the inhumanity that they had experienced and the persecution, and so that they wanted something concrete to hold on to in order to be able to tell the world what they had suffered. You know, he had a, a normal childhood, and then all of a sudden, everything is taken away from you. He had no photographs of his life before the Holocaust. There were no family heirlooms that he had, uh, nothing that he had written. So it's part of losing your, your identity, the identity that you had before the Holocaust. And so this is something, a part of his identity that he can hold on to. Ben lost his father when he was 11 years old. His brother was four or five years older than him, and so he became a surrogate father to Ben. In a way, he lost his father twice. And very often when Holocaust survivors lose somebody that close and dear, there is a lot of survivor guilt. Why did I survive? Why was my brother killed? What is it about me that, uh, that God enabled me to survive and not, not him? In uh, 1952, the uh, German government was forced into giving reparations to Holocaust survivors. But the whole reparation system almost replicated persecution in one way or another. The Germans would look for all kinds of ways not to give the reparation. So for example, in Mr. Perez's situation, uh, the mother asks to get reparations for the son that they killed. And so the German authorities ask her for a letter of witnesses of who saw the Germans killing her son. Now we have to remember that, they, uh, that the Germans took 300 Jews, they took them into the middle of the forest, they had a pit all prepared for them, and they all shot them. So who was left to be a witness from those 300? So did they ask for impossible kinds of documentation, and therefore if you don't have a witness that we killed your son, so therefore, you know, we didn't kill your son. The Germans did not want to give any reparations for psychological help. Now with Mr. Perez's situation, I mean, he had headaches all the way from the time he was in the ghetto. And these headaches, he continued to have at least two or three times a week that impaired him from working. He had to lie down when he got the headaches. This is a physical damage. And even then, he still had to fight with them for so many years till they finally gave him some reparations. He survived, his brother did not survive. There is this feeling of, I must have survived for a reason. So one of the things that keeps you going is I survived for a reason. I have to make the best of my life because God gave me a life. The other wonderful thing that happened in uh, Mr. Ben Perez's life is that he found a wonderful wife, a nurse, a very caring uh, woman who understood him psychologically, who was there for him, who was very supportive. And I think the whole idea of, of having children for Holocaust survivors after the Holocaust is this feeling of, you see Hitler, you didn't win after all and you see this continuity of, of the Jewish people. And in fact, uh, Mr. Perez has 
you know, children who are engaged in Jewish life and that this is an important part of their, their identity. I'm sure that the Perez children did not hear very much from their father about, uh, you know, what he had endured during the Holocaust. It's very difficult for a parent to want to be humiliated in front of their children. And a Holocaust survivor, when they talk about their experience, have to talk about all the humiliation that they experienced and how weak and helpless they were. And as a parent, you don't want to appear as weak and helpless in front of your child. Mr. Perez's children remember him as a happy guy who played with him, with them, who took them on vacation to Florida, who enjoyed their birthday parties. Uh, they probably saw him dancing at family functions and maybe even singing. This is who he was on a daily basis. But of course, he had nightmares in which, you know, he was either, you know, being chased or he remembered see, seeing his brother uh, beaten up. He had physical symptoms of the headaches that he, uh, that he got very early on in the war when it, it was first in the ghetto. And so these physical symptoms, these uh, psychological symptoms of, for example, of going to a doctor and seeing the doctor as a, as a Nazi who wasn't really there to help him. These are the little intrusions that he had in life that, that you don't share with small children. Children of Holocaust survivors go through a mourning process very similar to a mourning if you've lost somebody dear to you, but children of survivors go through a mourning process of mourning somebody they have not known. And so the, you know, finding uh, Mr. Ben Perez's uniform uh, is almost like a shock, if you will, which is the first level of, of mourning. You know, you find out, you know, so this is the shock of, gee, my, my father was a Holocaust survivor. Even though you knew it, it, has, it takes on a different resonance when you have something concrete to, you know, to see. And then once he begins his life, you have the documentation with all the photographs that he takes. So he was into documentation. He wanted the world to know what he was experiencing. And obviously he wanted the world to know what he was suffering with the German reparation system, keeping everything so meticulous. So there is no question that, that he would want the world today to know what he had suffered.